بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضن له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بلعة وكل بلعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته so inshallah we'll continue from where we left off last week and that was towards the end of this section and the sheikh he was discussing and mentioning to us a general point that continues on from last week's lesson and that was with regard to uh, what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam came with so inshallah we'll go through that today we'll finish the end we'll finish to the end of this section it's going to be a short lesson um, and we'll begin the new section in a new lesson next week so to continue then the sheikh he said that what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with he came with three affairs news akhbar commandments awamir Prohibitions Nawahi. And the Shaykh he goes on to explain here, so we'll read through this now. He goes he goes on to explain these. He says, Akbarun an umurin mugayibat min umur min umurin salafat or salifat wa umurin atiat wa umur in tatalaku bi asma il rabbil khalik and adima wa sifati jalawala. فمقتضى الشهادة له عليه الصلاة والسلام أن تصدق أخباره كلها. So then the Sheikh says in this point that the first thing or first of the three things that the Prophet ﷺ came with was, was news. He came with news with regards to the affairs of the unseen, the affairs of what happened in the past. For example, with previous nations, as one example. Uh, the affairs that are to come in the future, the prophecies, and the affairs which are linked uh, to the names uh, of our Lord, yeah, the great names and attributes of His Jalawala. And so, the point of this is to testify that whatever the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with is the truth. So, from the information that he came with, uh, is the truth, and it's upon us. To have that belief. Then the Shaykh he continues and he says, Wajaa alayhi salatu wa salam bi awamir amra bi tawheed, wa huwa a'adham wa shayin amra bihi, wa amra bi salati, wa amra bi siyami, wa amra bi haji, wa amra bi barri wa sidqi wa wafai wa amana wa lihsan. Amra alayhi salatu wa salam bi awamir kathira. وهو عليه وهو عليه عليه الصلاة والسلام لا يأمر إلا لا يأمر إلا بكل خير كما أنه عليه الصلاة والسلام لا ينهى إلا عن شر فما ترك خيرا إلا دل الأمة إلا إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا حذرها منه. سيدنا الشيخ he goes on to say and moves on to the commandments. So the Prophet wasallam also came with commandments as well. Such as the greatest of those commandments, he commanded us with a tawheed, tawheed of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And the Shaykh says this is the greatest of the commandments. And for example, another examples, as in we were command, he commanded us to pray to Allah Jalla wa'ala. He commanded us to fast. He commanded us to perform the hajj. He commanded us with all uh, performing all kinds of good deeds and being truthful and being trustworthy people and doing good and these kinds of acts of worship 
the uh, the Sheikh goes on to say, Allah, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded was with many commandments, and alayhi salatu wasalam did not command us with something except that it was good. So the Prophet sallallahu didn't command us to do something except that there, there was much good in it. Just like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't prohibit us or forbade us from something except that there was evil in that thing. So the Sheikh goes on to say, to summarize this, he says that the Prophet ﷺ didn't leave a thing that is good except he informed us and showed us it. And he didn't leave anything evil unturned except that he warned us from it. So then the Sheikh, he continues and he says, وَفِي بَابِ النَّوَاهِ نَهَا عَنْ أُمُونٍ كَثِيرًا وَأَعْذَمُ مَا نَهَا عَنْهُ الشِّرْكِ وَنَهَا عَنْ الْقَتْلِ نَهَا عَنْ عن, عن الزِّنَى نَهَا عَنْ السَّرِقَةِ نَهَا عَنْ شُرْبِ الْخَمْرِ نَهَا عَنْ الْكَذِبِ نَهَا عَنْ الْغِشْ إِلَى غَيْرِ ذَلِكَ وَهُمْ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ لَا يَنْهَا إِلَّا عَنْ شَرٍ وَضَرَرٍ so then the Sheikh moves on to the prohibitions that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he prohibited us from many things, and the greatest and at the head of them is shirk, associating partners in worship alongside Allah subhanahu wa taala. And the Sheikh brings some more examples just for our for our knowledge. He says also the Prophet ﷺ, for example, forbade us from killing. You know, forbade us you know, killing innocent people, for example. Forbade us from killing people. Forbade us from committing immoral acts like fornication. Forbade us from stealing. Forbade us from drinking alcohol. Forbade us from lying. Forbade us from cheating. And other than that, as the Sheikh mentions here, but, and he says that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he didn't pro- prohibit us from something except because of its evilness and harm towards us. So then the Sheikh he continues and he says to us, "فَمَنْ أَبْغَلَ شَيْئًا مِمَّا جَاءَ بِهِ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ فَكَذْ كَفَرَ إِذَا أَبْغَلَ أَمْرًا النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام بالصلاة أو أبغض الصلاة أو أبغض الصيام أو أبغض الصدق أو أبغض الوفاء أو أبغض الأمانة أو أبغض بر الوالدين أو أبغض سلة الأرحام أو أبغض أي شيء مما جاء به الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام فإنه يكفر وكذلك في باب النواهي من أبغض نهي النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام عن شرب الخمر أو أبغض نحيه عن الزنا أو أبغض نهي عليه الصلاة والسلام عن الغش أو عن الخيانة أو غير ذلك فإنه يكفر لأن هذا البغض لأن هذا البغض يتنافى مع شهادة له صلوات الله وسلامه عليه بالرسالة والواجب على المسلم تجاه ما أمر به عليه الصلاة والسلام أن يتلقاه بالقبول التام والإنقياد الكامل والتواعية والامتثال. So then the Sheikh goes on to say and he goes on to talk about the prohibition. So whoever dislikes or hates a thing that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with, this is general. Whoever the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with, then by way of that he commits disbelief falls into disbelief so for example the sheikh says if a, a person hates the command of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what he commanded with for example the prayer or if he actually hates the prayer or if he hates fasting or praying or being truthful or you know the likes of these being trustworthy all of these kinds of characteristics or if he hates you know being good to parents um, or if he uh, hates or dislikes um, you know 
keeping the ties of kinship, or if he hates anything which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with, then indeed, verily, he falls into disbelief because of that. The Sheikh goes on to say, and also, unlike that, with regards to uh, the subject or topic of prohibitions, then if he hates a prohibition, so if he now if those, so that was about the commandments. Now, if he hates any of the prohibitions that the Prophet sallallahu prohibited us from. For example, drinking alcohol, as mentioned earlier, um, uh, you know, or like person hates um, the fact that he's been prohibited from zina, fornication, or other than that. For example, cheating or being uh, or being uh, uh, deceiving, deception, or, or any of these kinds of traits, or anything that we've been prohibited from. Then, if he hates any of this, any if he hates any of these prohibitions, as in because he can't do them. Then, um, then he commits and falls into disbelief as well. The Sheikh says because this hate it negates his testification for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with his messengership, basically. So the second testification, Ashhadu anna Muhammadun Rasulullah, that is negated. Through this kind of act And the Sheikh says And, and what's obligatory upon the Muslim then uh, Towards that which uh, The Prophet ﷺ has commanded him with um, Is to Is to accept it completely That wherever the Prophet ﷺ has commanded us with Or prohibited us from That we accept it In completeness In complete acceptance of it Wherever he said And you know That we lower ourselves and humble, us, uh, humble ourselves as well and that we are obedient and that we carry out these acts as the Prophet Sallallahu of course was carrying out that which Allah has commanded him with as well. So <clears throat> to continue the Shaykh he says Wali Shaykh al Islam Rahimahullah Ta'ala Risalatun Qasira La Kinaha Adima Tun Nafi Kabira Tul Faida Sabaka Anna Quranaha ويمكن أن يعنون لتلك الرسالة بواجبنا نحو ما أمر الله به أو نحو ما أمرنا به رسوله عليه الصلاة والسلام ولخص رحمه الله تلك الواجبات في سبع أمور لخص تلك الواجبات علينا نحو ما أمرنا الله سبحانه وتعالى وما أمرنا به عليه الصلاة والسلام في أمور سبعة الأمر الأول العلم به والأمر الثاني محبته والأمر الثالث العزم على فعله والأمر الرابع أن نفعله والأمر الخامس أن يكون فعلنا له خالصا صوابا والأمر السادس أن نحذر من محبطات الأعمال والأمر السابع أن نثبت على أو نثبت أن نثبت على ذلك إلى الممات وشرح رحمه الله تعالى هذه الأمور السبعة شرحا مختصرا بضرب المثال والموضح المبين وهي رسالة عظيمة نف كبيرة الفائدة So then in this paragraph that we've just read the Shaykh he brings about an extra benefit for us, uh, Hafidullah he mentions the original author of the book we're reading right now, uh, Nawakdul al Islam. The original author, Sheikh al Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Muhab, he wrote um, um, a small treatise, a small treatise but with great benefits. And the Sheikh says that uh, he advises that we should. Read this and get familiar with this book. And the book was called, uh, we, we mentioned in Arabic, but our obligations towards that which Allah has commanded us with. And um, he mentions that in that book or small treatise, the author he summarized summarized the uh, uh, the obligations that are upon every male and female Muslim. What's upon them with regards to uh, the commands of Allah Jalla and the prohibitions 
as well. And those seven points, the Sheikh mentions here briefly. He mentions that he mentions that each of these affairs, he says, there are seven, and he says the first one is having knowledge of it. Second is having love of that, and the thirdly, uh, thirdly, having energy and striving upon doing the action or that commandment. Then fourthly, doing or acting out the commandment. Number five, <clears throat> that the actions be upon ikhlas for Allah Jalla wa Ala alone, and that those actions that you do are in line with the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The sixth point, and that we warn ourselves and be aware of those act actions that can nullify and erase our good deeds. And the seventh and final point from this small treatise as the Sheikh has mentioned, that we make ourselves firm on, upon all of the previous points, that we are firm upon them and on this methodology, up until death. And the Sheikh says that, that the, the original author, Rahmanullah, uh, explained these with examples in his book, Wajibuna Nahwama Amaran Allahu Bihi. And if anybody uh, is listening to this lesson and has access to the Telegram channel, if you go to the pinned um, message, you can go to the YouTube channel and there's, um, there's lessons, there's a lesson there uh, uh, within the YouTube channel. Um, entitled uh, Principles Every Muslim Must Know and, and that's a translation of that book Anybody in Bradford Living in BD3 or can get access to BD3 If you come to Umul Qura Islamic Centre every Wednesday There are lessons there With regards to this book currently at present So to continue um, uh, The Shaykh continues says وَمِنْ ذِمْنِ هَذِي الْوَاجِبَاتِ اللَّتِي ذَكْرَ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهُ مَحَبَّتَهُ أَنْ نُحِبَّ مَا جَاءَ عَنْهُ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاةُ وَسْلَامُ مِنْ أَوَامِرِ هَذَا مِنْ أَوَامِرِ مِنْ أَوَامِرِ هَذَا وَاجِبٌ وَاجِبٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ أَنْ يُحِبَّ كُلْ كُلْ أَمْرٍ أَمْرَ بِهِ النَّبِيُّ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاةُ وَسْلَامُ وَنْ يَقُومَ فِي الْقَلْبِ مَحَبَّةَ لِكُلِّ مَا أَمْرَ بِهِ النَّبِيُّ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاةُ وَسْلَامُ وَمِنْ الدُّعَاءِ الْمَعْثُورِ عَنْهُ صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهِ وَسَلَامُهُ عَلَيْهِ اللَّهُمَّ إِنِّي أَسْأَلُكَ حُبَّكَ وَحُبَّ مَنْ يُحِبُّكَ والعمل الذي يقربني إلى حبك فكل عمل يقرب إلى حب الله سبحانه وتعالى يجب علينا أن نحبه يجب أن يقوم في قلبنا محبة له ولا يجوز كراهية شيء كراهية شيء مما جاء به أو جاء عنه صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وهذه الكراهية إذا قامت في القلب شيء مما جاء به عليه الصلاة والسلام فإنه تصادم كل المصادمة لحقيقة الشهادة له صلوات الله والسلام عليه بالرسالة مصادمة لما جاء به عليه الصلاة والسلام تمام المصادمة وهي من محبطات الأعمال ومبتلاتها So the Sheikh says here then moving on he says and he focuses on love that having love for what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with of commandments and prohibitions. Because the Shaykh says that it's obligatory upon every Muslim that he loves uh, every affair or commandment that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with. And that he, and that he um, you know, follows in whatever he's being commanded to do, he does that. And that he loves it in his heart of that what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with. And the Shaykh said, and he quotes, and the Shaykh he quotes uh, a, a du'a, a supplication, the well-known supplication of the Prophet where he where he asked Allah Jalla Ala, that he asked Allah for his love and the love of who he loves, and deeds and actions that uh, bring brings him closer to Allah, to Allah's love. So the Shaykh he continues and he says, so every action or deed. Good deed, of course, brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's obligatory upon us to love. Love that commandment we're being commanded with. And of course, love Allah jalla wa ala as well. And the Shaykh says, it's obligatory upon us to establish in our hearts 
this love. And it's not uh, permissible to hate anything that the Prophet Sallallahu came with. Because this hate, if it's established within the heart for for any of whatever the Prophet Sallallahu came with, then it basically is a direct collision, yeah, an opposition to the reality of the Shahada, the second Shahada, with regard to when we testify that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a messenger, final messenger and servant of Allah Jalla Wa'ala and in, obviously in the messengership of the Prophet, then that is in direct um, contradiction, let's say, and it collides with this. So whoever hates whoever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with, automatically is negating that second testification of his Shahada. So the Shaykh says that if this is the case, then the person's deeds are erased and they're nullified. So we have to be very careful. So the Shaykh, he continues, and he says to us, هَذَا مَعْنَى قَوْلِهِ رَحْمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مَنْ أَبْغَلَ شَيْئًا مِمَّا جَاءَ بِهِ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَسْلَامُ وَلَوْ عَمِلَ بِهِ كَفَرُ And the Shaykh says, this is what the original author's uh, statement means. As in, and a statement here, he quotes it again, he says, whoever hates a thing that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with, and even if he acted upon it, then by because of him hating it and disliking it, he commits kufr, commits disbelief. And this is what the Shaykh is saying, that all, all explanation that is given as above, this is what it means. This is what the original author means. And then the Shaykh says, hey, and now, uh, بِمُجَرِّدْ وُجُودِ الْبُغْدِ فِي قَلْبِ وَلَوْ وُجِدَ مِنْهُ مِنْهُ الْعَمَلْ كَفْرَ بِاللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ مثل مثلا أو مثل لو أبغض أمر النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام وبسيام لكنه لا يترك السيام يسوم لكنه يبغض أمر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بسيام أو يبغض الصلاة أو يبغض, يبغض الحج أو يبغض الصدق أو يبغض شيئا مما أمر به النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام ولو عمل به يكفر لأن لأنه أبغض الهدى أبغض الحق أبغض دين الله أو أبغض شيئا من دين الله وفي الذكر الحكيم يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى ذلك بأنهم كرهوا ما أنزل الله فأحبت أعمالهم فأحبت أعمالهم فكراهية 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 ما أنزل الله عز وجل محبط للعمل والنبي عليه الصلاة والسلام دينه وحي من الله رب العالمين وتنزيل من الله جل وعلا نزل به الروح روح العمين على قلبك لتكون من المنذرين فمن أبغض شيئا مما جاء به عليه الصلاة والسلام ولو عمل به فإنه يكفر أي بمجرد قيام هذا البغض في قلبي لشيء مما جاء به الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام ونختم بالدعاء المأثور عن نبينا عليه الصلاة والسلام اللهم إنا نسألك حبك وحب من يحبك والعمل الذي يقربنا إلى حبك So the Shaykh he goes on to say and explain this further and he mentioned this earlier as well that that if, even if you even if the, if the person hates any of whatever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with then obviously he is disliking that which uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with which is revelation and uh, is divine revelation and it's ultimately from Allah Jalla wa'ala and so he is obviously disliking the deen of Allah and hating the deen of Allah so by way of this this is the reason why he is declared a disbeliever and also because he is hating guidance and the truth and hating the deen of Allah and hating a thing from the deen of Allah and the likes of that so and then the Shaykh mentioned this ayah, which was mentioned actually last week as well, uh, uh, with the rough meaning of that, they dislike that which Allah sent down, the revelation, and so their deeds were nullified and erased, and were rendered fruitless. And the Shaykh goes on to say, and, uh, and this is what can happen if there is hate or dislike for anything that uh, the Prophet ﷺ came with, ultimately because this is a revelation of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And then the Shaykh goes on to say also 
in in uh, from Surah al shuara verse 193 uh, that Jibreel came down was, uh, was sent down but Allah commanded Jibreel alayhi salam was sent down uh, he came down with this revelation yeah and he sent down to the prophet sallam this revelation so that he can warn the people uh, for example in this ayah so the shaykh brings these evidences for our uh, for our understanding and for us to ponder over this and also then the shaykh goes on to say and so um, he says that this is why that even if somebody um, acts upon uh, if, if they hate any of these actions uh, or commandments but they act up, uh, uh, even if they act upon it for example if they pray but they hate praying or they fast and they dislike fasting in their heart for example then they are rendered a disbeliever even if they act upon it and um, he says that this is an important thing to know as you can see it has grave consequences and then the sheikh he mentions the surah the, um, sorry the dua and supplication he mentioned earlier here uh, I won't repeat that as we're all aware of that now and that uh, we reached the end of this section and inshallah we'll continue with the next nullify of islam uh, in the next lesson inshallah barakallah fikum wallahu ta'ala alam wa sallallahu wa sallam ala abdihi wa rasoolihi nabiyuna muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh